of all the aggressive, disease-spreading, viciously territorial and habitat-ruining species in California. It is perhaps surprising that the most destructive specimen of this region would be a seemingly humble mouse. An outwardly unremarkable creature, this single mouse, named Mickey, will rise over a relatively short time to become the dominant mammal, subverting the usual hierarchies and laws of nature and devouring almost the entirety of its environment. Mickey latches its little yellow teeth onto Lucasfilm, thrashes it about in its jaws, then drags it into its burrow and gnaws at it whilst it strains in its death throes. Within a few years, fat and corpulent, Mickey excretes Star Wars films that are soulless commercial products. The second instalment of this trilogy will, somewhat ironically, be directed by the human being most closely resembling a rodent, in Ryan Johnson. Alas, the rapacious and predatory Mickey is not satisfied with gorging itself on the carcass of Star Wars and seeks to quell its appetite by exploiting the beloved Marvel Studios. Lamentably, Mickey's fur begins to bristle and in a fervour of squeaking, it casts its beady red eyes over the studio and soon produces a phase four that will leave audiences dismayed at how much it blows. Fiercely protecting its territory, Mickey feeds blindly on the entrails of the property, heedless in its feeding frenzy of the incredulity meeting such bullshit as Loki and Moon Knight. Grossly overweight, it begins to bite indiscriminately at anything that might offer sustenance. Pixar Studios, once the darling of the entertainment industry, is chewed at relentlessly its magic giving way to bland and insipid identity politics with disproportionate homosexual themes. By now, as a specimen of mouse, Mickey is ghastly to behold, bloated with mangy, patched, lice-ridden fur, transmitting disease through its rabid saliva, it excretes drastically awful content. The Mandalorian descends into farce with a cynically exploitative marketing construct in Baby Yoda, intensely narrow scope of storytelling and general sense that it sucks balls. The Book of Boba Fett induces moments of toe-curling cringe-worthiness and doesn't just suck balls, but alas, sucks post-gym sweaty balls and Kenobi sucks retch-inducing vinegary homeless person balls. Following on from this saliva slicked mouth, to scrotum slurping, our soaker is crammed full of girl bosses who slay, and like most of the Disney Star Wars world, the male writers are pussies, and the women dull and prickly, with no boyfriends, driven by agendas, and the message. The message. Having deposited its droppings everywhere, and scuttled into every crevice of Hollywood, Mickey flings together a cynical succession of live-action remakes, produces a critically panned Pinocchio and lame-as-shit Ant-Man. After this bomb is the dumpster fire of Willow, which features a pair of medieval Scissor Sisters and is consigned to the oblivion of Disney+. Plus. Peter Pan features Wendy punching Peter and knocking him out like a bitch, a Little Mermaid remake with a divisive lead, and a musical number that almost induces an unflappable British institution such as myself to go on a gun-toting rampage, then turn the smoking weapon upon myself. An Indiana Jones film has a protagonist only scarcely younger than me, with shenanigans involving time-travelling Nazis. A secret invasion series depicts Nick Fury as a tedious douchebag. A Snow White remake features... I'm not making this shit up. Magical people. After wreaking such havoc, the shrilly squeaking mouse begins to turn on its own spawn. CEO Bob Shapek is fired. Victoria Alonso is given the flick for treating visual artists like mice on a wheel 
an equity and diversity head is dispatched. Billions of dollars are lost on Disney+. Plus. Galaxy's Edge shuts down. Film budgets become ludicrously huge. And soon, Mickey's burrow is full of mice whose tails have become entwined and knotted. And the whole vicious family begin to scratch and bite at one another. A once agile and cunning specimen of a mouse, Mickey begins to languish, squatting in its own diuretic faeces, its little fangs worn down to ineffectual nubs, its fur worn away, its skin exposed and scabbed. Disease-ridden, no longer able to forage, it begins to gnaw away at its own distended flesh, consuming itself, gorging on its own sagged and sprawling bulk, chewing on its plump tail and squealing as it brings about its own hideous demise. Gradually, the balance of nature is restored. The scarred ecosystem begins to revive. Fretful creatures begin to re-emerge and frolic in the dew-dappled undergrowth. Suck it, Mickey Mouse. 